I'm Joe Franks with Growmark, field sales agronomist here in Western Illinois, and I'm here to talk to you today about corn leaf diseases. The first disease I'm going to talk about, and probably one of the most prevalent uh, corn leaf diseases within the Growmark trade territory, would be gray leaf spot. Symptoms of this early on would be a quarter to two inch tan to gray lesion that usually form in between the veins of the corn plant. Later on throughout its development, it can tend to take over the lower leaves of the plant as those necrotic lesions almost kind of come together in between the veins. As far as some conditions that are favorable for uh, gray leaf spot, time frame would be late July and August. Best thing to think about is, is to keep that ear leaf uh, protected um, from gray leaf spot. Weather conditions um, favoring this disease would be warm, humid weather, with long periods of, of dew in the mornings, uh, two to three hours. So management practices regarding gray leaf spot, uh, number one would be rotation, um, as this, this disease overwinters in corn residue. Also genetic selection uh, for tolerance to gray leaf spot uh, is also a good management tool. And corn on corn rotation tillage and residue incorporation helps break up uh, the residue that, that harbors gray leaf spot. Also when thinking about gray leaf spot, this is a fungal disease, so an application of fungicide would be a good management practice for gray leaf spot as well. Another leaf disease in corn would be northern corn leaf blight. Although not as prevalent throughout the territory as some others, still definitely noteworthy and something that is a possibility within our geography. Symptoms of northern corn leaf blight, as seen in the picture, this tan lesions that we call often look cigar-like, like a rolled up cigar, that first appear on the lower leaves, but spread to the upper leaves. As far as some favorable conditions go and scouting time for northern corn leaf blight, the months of July and August uh, are the best time to, to see this disease with moderate temperatures from 65 degrees to 89 degrees Fahrenheit, along with long periods of, of a heavy dew. Some management practices against northern corn leaf blight would be number one, rotation to soybean, as this disease does overwinter in corn residue. Also, genetic selection for tolerance to northern corn leaf blight. Most hybrids today have very good tolerance to northern corn leaf blight and probably make it a less prevalent disease in our geography. Another more common corn leaf disease within our trade territory would be Goss's wilt. Now, there's two parts to Goss's wilt. The actual wilting of the plant, but what I'm going to talk to you about is the leaf blight portion of Goss's wilt. So when we look at the symptomology of Goss's wilt, we will see these very large lesions on the corn leaf that are tan in color and often look water soaked, uh, very shiny or glossy as we see this shiny exudate that is coming from the, the uh, bacterial pustules on uh, Goss's wilt. Another common symptom of Goss's wilt would be the black freckling along the edge of the actual lesion. Now this disease can commonly be mistaken for a lot of other types of either nutrient deficiencies or possibly sun scald. Um, so it's a tough disease to identify. With regards to scouting and favorable conditions for Goss's wilt, there's a wider window of time uh, that Goss's wilt can set in in a plant. We look for Goss's wilt in the months of May to September, so a little wider window than, than some other corn leaf diseases. Another thing to think about with Goss's wilt is a lot of times infection occurs when plants are wounded from maybe a heavy wind or rain, uh, heavy rain and hail, of course, as well. 
And those sorts of situations favor disease transmission through wounds in the plant. As far as some management tactics against Goss's wilt, this is a bacterial disease that does overwinter in residue, along with a pretty good sized list of host weeds. This disease can also be seed borne. And probably the number one management tactic against Goss's wilt would be rotation and tillage. Tillage can really have an effect on the inoculum of the residue in the soil, along with uh, rotation to soybean, as soybeans cannot contract Goss's wilt. Also, genetic selection plays a big part in, in management, as most hybrids have ratings against Goss's wilt. Being this is a bacterial disease, fungicides will not help in the, in the management of Goss's wilt. It may help the plant be a little healthier at that point in time of application, but fungicides will not have any counteraction against bacterial leaf diseases. Some concluding thoughts with regards to corn leaf diseases. We discussed the symptomology and management tools against northern corn leaf blight, gray leaf spot, and Goss's bacterial wilt. Some of the most important things to keep in mind would be the time of scouting, when the disease is present, and probably first and foremost, keeping that disease triangle at the forefront of your mind when scouting for these diseases. If you have any questions, please contact your local FS crop specialist.